death, kid death. I was just killing whoever was closest. Kid death is also on him. Yeah, I can take care of usually, but if you if you got a better shot on uh, somebody else, and take it. I got whatever shot. Or well, keep death. We keep can death. That everyone here is a hostile. We got him. We got him. We got him. Yeah. We got him. Is it just one one guy? Yeah, it looks like just one guy. Alright, so he's obviously going to blow right through, so I'm going to pre-nose already. Well, I'm not really happy with my angle. Uh, stair step. Up. 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 Boost. Now I've got the angle I want on him. He's gonna try and run. Now I'm gonna chase him. You were going, what, almost 1200 when you came into that merge? Yep, I was going pretty quick. Jeez. Only way to merge with someone who's going high speed is to just basically. I think he's gonna try and bring it down to the deck, which is not gonna be good for him. Because I get, I get better as I get closer to the deck. There we go. That was a 600 meter per second plus kill. Alright, so today we're tackling the very important issue of engaging or chasing at high speeds. So, like many fights, we notice that the engaging Hornet in this situation is obviously coming at us at a pretty high clip. So, I'm going to position my main thruster against him. I'm going to predict the direction that he is flowing in and I'm going to stair step maneuver my way up. So I even say, you can see the little vector indicator here and the stop there, it comes up, it levels out, comes up again, levels out, creates that kind of stair step. As I'm doing this, I'm hitting the boost really hard and I'm dropping my speed limiter to max and I'm slowly closing in on my target. Since I've got the position, I'm within 800 meters, which means I do have effective fire. We notice here that the Hornet starts to panic. He's like, uh oh, I've been chased, I'm at high speed. For him to slow down now, he's, uh, he's going to take a lot of hits. So he's going to try and disengage. And like a lot of Persistent Universe pilots, a lot of times, most of the pilots they engage, they can simply hit their accelerator and be able to get away. But in this particular situation, unfortunately, <laughs> he was not that lucky. Now we go into a little bit of a circle fight here. I'm slowly moving around him and I know that his vector is starting to accelerate out of this circle. So I'm going to preemptively boost myself around that corner so I close the distance. Again, a prediction of vector. Okay, now I don't have to always keep my nose in line with my vector because we are flying at 60 OF. But the point is I predicted and boosted in the direction that I knew that he was going to eventually start to drift. Right? So as we go into this high speed chase, you'll notice that I'm not making any kind of maneuvers um, unnecessarily. Right, I'm very, very flat as I chase. And this is something people don't realize is when you're chasing, you want to stay as flat as you possibly can. And as soon as you start see a vector change, you want to pull your nose in the direction of where his nose is facing so you can get yourself the best chance you can. And again, you don't want to make unnecessary motions. Right, so right here we see, okay, we got some we got some movement coming down. He's moving down towards the planet. So I want to flatten my trajectory as flat as I can. I don't want to make any unnecessary movements and I want to keep my wings cutting as close as I can so that the distance traveled between me and him is the least it is. So again, notice the little plus than greater than signs and where they were situated during that dive because it was in the direction of where he ended up moving into because what I did was I cut the angle like this graphic here. In any kind of situation where you're chasing a target, you don't want to react too much to the small movements they're doing. Instead, what you want to do is you want to predict their overall path pattern. The higher the speed, the easier it is to predict what the overall movement direction will be. And so in order for you to close the distance, you need to flatten your trajectory out so that it's in the direction of what their flow or what their drift vector is slowly pushing them towards because you don't need to worry about avoiding fire. So you don't need to do any kind of evasive maneuvering. But in order for you to close the distance in a chase, you need to flatten out, predict where the overall movement direction will be, push yourself in that direction, 
close the distance to make the kill. All right, guys, that's it. That brings us to the end of the video. I just want to say thank you to everybody who's come by the stream and said hi and had some fun. Thank you to all the subs and everyone who's been supporting the stream. Guys, if you like this content, smash that fucking like button so we can send it around the world, baby, and get everybody taught and trained so they can get out there and get some kills or just learn how to defend yourself. All right, guys, take a look at Predator mounts if you're interested in picking up mounts for your joysticks. That's the ones I use, and I think they're absolutely fantastic. Use the code Avenger1 for 5% off if you're looking for sticks and mounting systems. All right, guys, I hope to see all of you out for stream. I was Avenger1, and I'll see you next time.